It is true that one, the eight dharmas of respect that Bishunis uphold calls for Bishunis to show due respect to Bishus. But before a Bishu can be respected by others, he must first have a little self-respect, and his mind has to be very pure. Such a Bishu is worthy of being respected. If a Bishu doesn't do anything all day long, but but have false thinking. There's absolutely no way that he can be called a bishu. He's just the same as an ordinary person. It's not to say that you can put on a robe of a bishu and be bishu. You have to actually practice the dramas of a bishu and to always be striving to purify your three commas of body, mouth, and mind. The meaning of the word bishu is one who begs for food, one who frightens the demons, one who destroys evil. To destroy evil means to destroy all impure thoughts. If you have impure thoughts, you should be greatly ashamed. This respect we are talking about isn't a superficial respect. It has to be earned. It comes from maintaining purity of the three commas of body, mouth, and mind. A Shramanura, a milk novice, can, can't look down on Bishunis. So whether you're a Shramanura, a Shramanurika, a Bishu or a Bishuni, you have to cultivate pure karma of body, mouth, and mind. If your three karma are impure, you should be greatly ashamed. It, this doesn't have anything to do with how well educated you are. If you are impure in the three commas of body, mouth, and mind, it's not going to work. You're not going to make it. By means of the purification, one gradually certifies to Ahashrib, the first, second, third, and fourth fruitions. One who certifies to the fruit is called an Ahat, who is apart from desire. Apart from desire means that one has cut off desire. To so cut off desire is to be pure. When you've reached the level of having cut off all desire, when you can truly remain unmoved by what's going on around you by stays, then you may be counted as having done something. If you are not turned by stays, then draw three commas of body, mouth, and mind can be said to be pure. If that is the case, you can say whatever you want and it's all Buddha Dharma. But if you haven't cut off desire, then no matter what you say is non ultimate Dharma. In fact, if you like that, then when you are like Chowing Sutras, you can talk around and around in circles, but you'll be just be dwelling on the surface. You won't be able to get down to so the genuine bonds and marrow the true doctrine within the Sutra. Sutra, if there is one who is respectful of the Buddha and mindful, so repay the Buddha's kindness that one will never be apart from dwelling with all Buddhas. How could a person with wisdom, having seen or heard the Buddha, not cultivate pure vows and walk the Buddha's path? Commentary, if there is one who is respectful of the Buddha and mindful to repay the Buddha's kindness. That one will never be apart from dwelling with all Buddhas. To be mindful is to one to repay the Buddha's kindness. One always thinks of repaying the Buddha's kindness and wants to constantly follow the Buddhas in study. This person doesn't ever want to leave the Buddhas. He doesn't want to leave the way place. What is a way place? The straight mind is the way place. The straight mind is the place where all Buddhas dwell. How could a person with wisdom having seen or heard the Buddha not cultivate pure vows? If this person is able to constantly see the Buddha and constantly hear the Dharma, how can he not give rise to or cultivate pure vows and walk the Buddha's path? You should constantly want to walk down the path of all Buddhas. You don't want to follow your own mind and casually talk and casually create karma. That is not walking the path of the Buddhas. To walk the Buddha's path, your three karma of body, mouth, and mind have to constantly be pure. 
They don't want to create the three evils of the body, killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct. The three evils of the mind, greed, hatred, and stupidity. All the four evils of the mouth, irresponsible speech, false speech, abusive speech, and divisive speech. You shouldn't do any of these. If you don't engage in this evil, then draw three karmas are pure, and you are in fact walking the path of all Buddhas. Sutra at that time, courageous banner Bodhisattva, receiving the Buddha's spiritual power, universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. Commentary at that time, courageous banner Bodhisattva spoke verses. This Bodhisattva is so named because he is courageous, vigorous, and pure. He courageously changes his forms, and he bravely advances. So he is courageous and vigorous. He is not lax, not at all lazy, and he never lets the time pass in vain. Whatever mistakes this Bodhisattva has made, except for those that he doesn't know about, he immediately repents of. He changes his forms, therefore he is called Courageous Banner Bodhisattva. The mention of this Bodhisattva's name is a way of reminding living beings that whenever they created offense karma, they should immediately bring forth a mind of repentance, change their former forms, and go forward the good. This Bodhisattva was receiving the Buddha's spiritual power. He received and relied upon the great, awesome spiritual power of Shakyamuni Buddha and all of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions and Three Buddhas of Time. And then he universally contemplated the Ten Directions. He everywhere contemplated the causes and conditions of all living beings throughout the Ten Directions and Three Buddhas of Time and spoke these verses. He used verses to praise the Buddha. Sutra, just like clear and pure eyes, which because of the sun can see a multitude of forms, so too the pure mind in the same way can see the Tathagata by means of the Buddha's power. Just as the power of Vigo, one is able to fathom the source of the sea, so too the power of wisdom enables one to see measureless Buddhas. Commentary, Courageous Bani Bodhisattva said, just like clear and pure eyes which, because of the sun, can see a multitude of forms. The analogy he uses is a person's clear and pure eyes which have bright light of wisdom. Although one with these pure eyes can see at night, still it's not as easy for him to see things as it is during the day. With the aid of sunlight, he is able to see all kinds of shapes and forms. So too the pure mind in the same way. Pure eyes are analogous to a pure mind. However, even if you have a pure mind, but don't obtain the Buddha's power, you still won't be able to see him. But if a mind is pure and it moreover unites with the light of the Buddha's wisdom, then the principle and substance of the real mark come together. Therefore, he says, so too the pure mind in the same way, can see the Satagata by means of the Buddha's power. With the Buddha's power aiding you, you'll be able to see the Buddha. The power of his aid and protection is inconceivable. If everyone had a pure mind without any defined thoughts, then each person would obtain the Buddha's protection and aid. The Buddha would help you. If your mind isn't pure and you have a lot of divided thoughts, then it's not easy for the Buddha to help you. Pure mind is also analogous to pure water from above. You can see straight to the bottom. An impure mind is like murky water in which there's a lot of sediment. In that case, your mind is so clouded over that even when the Buddha wants to protect and help you, he doesn't find it easy. Therefore, it is said, when the mind is pure, the moon appears in water, when thoughts are still, there's certainly not a cloud in the sky.
just as with the power of Vigo, one is able to fathom the source of the sea. If one can be vigorous throughout the six periods of the day and night, constantly being vigorous, being for the great body mind, cultivating unceasingly and without any laziness in one's cultivation, then one will be able to exhaust the great source of the sea. If you work vigorously, you will be able to plumb the source of the sea, which is analogous to reaching the source of all dharmas. It means penetrating the source of all dharmas and reaching the ultimate place of the dharma. So too, the power of wisdom enables one to see measureless Buddhas. The power of wisdom is likened to the power of Vigo. You want to have wisdom as great as the Buddhas. So you and the Buddha are united as a one. If you have great wisdom, then you'll be able to fathom the ultimate source of all dharmas and see measureless Buddhas. If you are without wisdom, you won't be able to see even a single Buddha. However, with great wisdom, you'll be able to see measureless Buddhas. Sutra, just as a rich fertile field, will certainly nourish and make grow what is planted in it. So too, the pure mind ground produces all Buddha dramas. Just as a person who obtains a storehouse of jewels leaves the bitterness of poverty forever, the Bodhisattva who obtains the Buddha dharma is apart from filth and purity is mind. Just as Agatha medicine is able to eradicate all poisons, so too, the Buddha Dharma in the same way eradicates the distress of all afflictions. Commentary Just as a rich, fertile field will certainly nourish and make grow what is planted in it, so too, the pure mind ground produces all Buddha Dharmas. The Bodhisattva offers the analogy, namely that of a good, rich, and fertile field. This field is very fertile to begin with, so when the seeds of rice, grains, or other things are planted in the field, they certainly will become very abundant and full. No matter what kinds of things are planted, they will flourish. The grains that come from the fields will be shiny as though there were a lot of oil in them, and their color will be a dark, rich green rather than a dull yellow. If the crops that grow in the field are yellow, it indicates the field is not fertile enough. If the field is fertile, then whatever is planted will thrive and be abundant. In the same way, the mind ground which is pure without defilement brings forth all Buddha dharmas. All Buddha dharmas are produced from a pure mind, not from a defined mind. If your mind is pure, then all Buddha dharmas will come forth from it. The 84,000 dharma doors are not apart from a single thought in your mind. If one thought is pure, then 84,000 dharma doors will simultaneously appear. You shouldn't go out looking for the Buddha dharma. Why not? Because it's inherent in your nature. Your self-nature originally constants, uh, contains the 84,000 dharma doors. Therefore, you don't need to seek outside. Just as a person who obtains a storehouse of jewels leaves the bitterness of poverty forever, the Bodhisattva who obtains the Buddha Dharma is apart from filth and purifies his mind. This time, the analogy is that of a person who obtains a treasury of jewels. Inside the catch, there's gold, silver, precious gems, crystal, Mother of Pearl, Red Pearls, and Carnelian, the Seven Jewels. These are the seven kinds of precious things found in the earth. Once this person obtains these treasures, he can be apart from the suffering of poverty. The Bodhisattva who obtains the Buddha Dharma is also like one who obtains a storehouse of jewels, because by means of it, he can leave the defilements in the mind and attain a pure mind. When the mind returns to its original purity, then all wisdom appears. The last analogy which the Bodhisattva presents is that of Agatha medicine. No matter what sickness one has, 
this medicine can cure it. Even the dead will be will come back to life. It is able to eradicate all poisons. No matter what the poison might be, this medicine can get rid of it. This medicine is comparable to the c o r i c e root. The Chinese having a saying that have a saying that l i q u r i c e is compatible with all other herbs and can cure all poisons. Among medicines, it is the prime minister. It is also said to lend universal tolerance because it can dispel poisons and because very few people allergic to it. I get a medicine is like that. No matter what kind of poisonous illness you have, it can cure it. So too, the Buddha Dharma in the same way eradicates the distress of all afflictions. In the same way, the Dharma which the Buddha spoke is also a kind of a g a t a medicine that can destroy the 84,000 kinds of afflictions of people. The Buddha spoke the Dharma precisely to cure the 84,000 kinds of illness that people have. He spoke 84,000 Dharma d o s designed to eradicate all afflictions and calamities. By means of them, the inexhaustible afflictions that people have are cut off. We should want to break off our afflictions and cultivate the Buddha Dharma. Therefore, studying the Buddha Dharma is the best method to eradicate all afflictions.